Blue Ox Productions presents EFI Ural Rear Brake Modification. Okay, just to give you a brief review, uh, I have a couple of minor modifications I did to my rear brake. Uh, the first one was to remove the parking brake assembly, um, and this bolt there just holds the cam back. Um, that helped me a lot when it comes to I never have to adjust my back brake uh, ever. Uh, my second modification was as I moved the reservoir from the left side of the bike behind the battery cover over to the right side of the bike where the parking brake handle used to reside. But the whole time I've been looking at this and I have been wanting to get rid of this whole conglomeration right here. The floating rotor, the fixed disc, it's, it's just, uh, it's always bothered me. I, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good disc, disc brake, uh, but uh, just that whole, that's a lot. This all right here is a lot for this rear wheel. So I threw some ideas around trying to figure out what to do. And then one day I went and visited a friend that owns a Solo model. So here's a picture of the setup on the Solo. And I hope it's coming okay on the video. But what I noticed on the Solo is that it uses the same caliper and the same disc that's used on the sidecar. So I thought, how could I get this to mount on a patrol? Now, I know, and one of the first questions people are going to ask is on the CT model or on the Solo, it uses the same rim on the rear as it does on the side car for the CT or it uses the same rim on the rear as it does for the front so there's going to be some challenges in getting this but I really like the idea of having the same caliper same disc on both my side car and the rear of my bike so this is what I came up with so here are the parts I purchased um, just got it from a local dealer. Uh, disc brake, or the disc. Now these are all put together. These are three separate pieces, but this is the caliper. This is the, uh, uh, the arm, uh, the torsion arm. I'm not exactly what you, you want to call it, but it, it, it keeps the, uh, the caliper in position and, and not rotating. And this is the bracket that holds the caliper and that the rear axle uh, goes through. I also bought a brake line off of a Solo model um, to use. But it did present uh, two challenges uh, that I needed to uh, overcome and uh, I'll show you how I did that. The first challenge is, is this whole pattern is for the sidecar. The sidecar uh, uses a different wheel. It has a, an aluminum spacer on it and the holes match up to that. If you know on the patrols, they have the larger hubbed wheel on the rear, and it's a four-hole pattern, not a five. So that challenge had to be overcome. Here's another challenge that has to be overcome. This spacing right here, that bushing right there. On the Solo model, it is... I don't know if you can see that, 50 millimeters. Here's a bracket off of a patrol that holds its existing thing on, and it's 45 millimeters. Now this is critical into how the axle, or the, the spacing of the caliper on the disc, but it's also critical as to how far the axle goes through so you can put a nut on it. So something is going to have to be done to make up that five millimeters somewhere. So I'll show you how uh, we got to that. Well, to solve the first problem, I had to have a, uh, a plate made up, machined up, uh, that would fit inside the, the brake disc, but have the hole pattern for the uh, Ural rear wheel. 
And I learned some valuable lessons in, in doing this. Um, the brake disc is five millimeters. Uh, couldn't find any steel five millimeter stick. But it's probably good that I didn't because I learned another valuable lesson about cold rolled steel. It's not flat. So I bought quarter inch stock and then I had this machined out and then they had to grind it down from the quarter inch to where it's five millimeters, not only to where it's five millimeters, but to where it's flat on both sides. So that way, not only is it completely flat, but the five millimeter matches the thickness of the brake disc. And then of course, after all of that, it didn't even dawn on me when I first bought the steel is, it needs to be, um, uh, there needs to be some kind of coating or something put on it to uh, make sure it doesn't rust or corrode. So I, I looked at the different options we had here in Albuquerque and uh, I went with uh, zinc, uh, zinc coating on it. Uh, that was the cheapest, uh, the easiest, uh, the quickest. Uh, not only that, but I think it was about the only option I had in, in Albuquerque. They, uh, um, they didn't do uh, the, the places in Albuquerque only anodize aluminum. They don't anodize steel. But anyhow, I had to have this plate made up. And this is what it looks like on the brake disc. And again, it's a, it's a floating disc, so uh, these pieces come out. Uh, there's a little snap ring that holds them in and a couple of flat washers with a wave washer sandwich between them. Okay, but that's what's going to mount on the Ural wheel. So here's problem number three that I... Uh... Um, I encountered uh, when mounting everything um, was I got the, the axle in, uh, this bracket in that holds the caliper, and this is the, uh, the I don't know what we really call this, the tension arm, uh, the torque arm, something like that. Uh, things must be spaced differently a little bit on a patrol on the uh, on the two-wheel drive swing arm versus the one-wheel drive because when I bolted uh, the, the torsion arm to where this plastic bushing goes right here I could either line up this hole and not this hole or I could line up this hole and not this hole so uh, uh, I lined up this hole and I'll show you what the fix was for these two holes not lining up so that was the third problem we had to overcome again nothing Nothing too earth shattering, but uh, a pretty straightforward fix. So here is the Ural solo brake setup, solo rear brake setup on a patrol. As you can see, uh, there is the floating disc with the with the adapter that I had machined out. Um, here is the solo brake uh, uh, torque arm, solo brake bracket solo brake caliper which is the same as the sidecar and this disc is the same as the sidecar and what was real good about putting it all this together is this is five millimeters thick this disc and this bracket and it bolted straight to the hub and with the the distance bushing here on this bracket which was 50 millimeters bolting the caliper on, it perfectly lined up with the center of the disc. I didn't have to shim the disc, I didn't have to shim the caliper. Okay, now to solve the two problems, uh, the one that this collar was 50 millimeters long and this collar was 45 millimeters long, we had to make up that five millimeters because the, the axle wouldn't go all the way through to get a nut. Basically what we did is we turned it on, now this isn't the axle itself, but this is what we did with the rear axle. We took it on a lathe and we turned five millimeters back off this collar. So we just moved this collar back five millimeters. It still gave plenty of room. As you can see, I still have plenty of room to get in the hole right there. And the nut lines up perfectly on the other side. And then the other problem that we tackled with this bracket not lining up is we cut the bracket off. If you remember the, the lug out here with the ear on it, we cut that off. Then we drilled another hole, tapped it on this side, and I ran a bolt there so we have an extra bolt. So the caliper mounts on with these two bolts, 
and this bracket mounts on with this bolt. Just a couple of notes of what I really like about this setup. One, the sidecar disc and the rear disc is exactly the same. The only difference, I have this adapter plate in there. Um, uh, I have the same caliper on the sidecar as I do on the rear brake. Um, it's infinitely easier to bleed. There's no adjustments for the parking brake. Uh, I use the same pads here as on the sidecar. Uh, it's just a cleaner look. It's easier to get the wheel on and off, um, to get that caliper off. So, to me, it was worth the time, the effort, and the, and the money to put all this together. And I think it's just a, a lot cleaner look. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention is the braking is infinitely better. The, the balance between the sidecar and the, and the rear wheel is spot on. Uh, stopping power, I can lock up the brake easily with no problem. And to me, it's just a much better setup. I like it so much better than the uh, stock caliper that comes with a 2014 year old.